It's been 14 years since Back to Earth hit our screens, but I watched it recently and came up with a theory that maybe Doug Naylor has had us all looking in the wrong direction when it comes to Back to Earth. So if you think you've got the whole meta, squid ink, hallucination thing figured out, then you need to hear this. Well, greetings fellow Dwarfers. Back to Earth was a fascinating free part of which saw the boys wind up on Earth then eventually wake up back on Red Dwarf, having realised the whole thing was a hallucination brought on by an encounter with hallucinogenic squid ink. Now it's made pretty explicit when exactly that hallucination was meant to have begun. It was right after the boys exit the diving bell and just before Katerina Bartokowski shows up. Or was it? You see there are a few clues which have got me wondering if there's more going on than first meets the eye and may imply that the boys were in the hallucination before the diving bell scene perhaps long, long before it. One of the most prominent clues is early in the first episode where the cat quite literally drops in on Lister whilst he's grieving over Kachansky in the Memorial Garden Observation Dome. What happened to you? You got a minute? The cat seems to drop down directly from the floor above, implying that he's come down from where the G-Deck water tank is located, given that he's still dripping wet, except look closer. There's no floor above Lister at this point, there's nothing but glass and the vast, cold emptiness of space. So unless we're meant to believe that the cat has managed to do a Spider-Man across the glass roof, then it's not illogical to wonder if he's got there in a more impossible way, implying that we might perhaps already be within the group hallucination where dreams can come true. That's a cheesy way to put it. Then about quarter of an hour into the first episode, the boys get into a fight with the squid and end up covered in pink goo, with Rimmer getting a good splash as well when Lister hurls a tentacle at him. The idea here is that like back in series five's Back to Reality, love this t-shirt, the boys have come into contact with Despair Squid or rather Joy Squid Inc, sparking their group hallucination a few moments later. But there's a problem here, as I see it, that pink goo isn't squid ink, it's squid blood. Let's take a look. The boys fight with the tentacles, but there's no obvious pink goo to see, and they don't seem to get sprayed or covered in ink. And we don't actually see any pink stuff until they exit the diving bell covered in pink goo. Okay, maybe it's just me and I'm just misreading things, but that looks like pink blood to me, particularly with Lister carrying a couple of detached tentacles with a messy knife between his teeth. Yes, I did have to film that a few times to say tentacles, not testicles, just like the cat did. If testicle shoots up out of the water and grabs me by the throat, he means tentacle. Plus, when we look at Series 5's Back to Reality, we see, or rather, we don't see any bright pink goo when Lister puts his glove into squid ink. The ink is black, which actually far more closely resembles the black ink we see from real world sea creatures. But possibly the most convincing and compelling argument of all, the most earth-shattering, my theory-hinging element, the most important thing you need to pick up on. When the cat came to talk to Lister about being attacked by the squid, he didn't stop to fix his hair first. Smeg, he didn't even have it sorted by the time he got to the sleeping quarters. Now, if that doesn't make you sceptical, well, frankly, I don't know what will. Okay, so all this leads to the inevitable question. Just what was going on then? Well, we have to remember that the squid is in the ship's water supply, so the crew could have been contaminated with ink at any time by simply drinking or washing in contaminated water. So here are a few possibilities. Firstly, the possibility with the least effect on the Red Dwarf timeline would be if they've been in the hallucination since only a few hours or days before Back to Earth Part 1 began. Lister even mentions early on that they're down to their last water tank with only G-Deck left, implying that the switch to the G-Deck tank was a recent thing which may have brought with it squid ink contamination if you see G-Deck tank as isolated from the others. Then there's a possibility which would really screw with the continuity and history of the show. Perhaps they've been in a hallucination ever since they returned to Red Dwarf at the end of Series 7. It would explain why the ship changes from the short version at the end of Nanarchy to be in the long version at the beginning of Back in the Red Part 1, even though that's supposed to be the exact same moment in time. This could mean that the whole of Series 8 is within a dream. Kind of interesting, and it would explain why we have a living Rimmer at the end of Series 8 and a hologram version by the time we get to Back to Earth. And finally, there's a possibility that really messes with my head, as well as totally screwing up pre and possibly post Back to Earth canon. 
What if there never was a second squid and they're still in the original back to reality dream and they never left even though they thought they'd exited? This isn't actually as bonkers as you might think, given that there's a precedent for this within Red Dwarf, with Series 2's Better Than Life having the crew apparently return to reality, only to discover, much to Rimmer's dismay, that they're still trapped in the dream. Also, the book Better Than Life did a very similar thing as well. We could really push this theory out in many different directions and try and work out how much of the show would be missing then, Series 6, Series 7, Series 8, and it could even mean that the stuff after Back to Earth, they could still be in a dream. So series 10, 11, 12 and The Promised Land, all Dave era, could still be within a hallucination. Very interesting. This could actually bring with it a fun little possibility that some of the other characters within Back to Reality and Back to Earth could actually be real world people who were also caught up in the same hallucination. Perhaps there were some others trapped on the Esperanto who'd come into contact with the ink, it could be great fun to have Andy appear alive in some future episode. How about Noddy? How about the know-it-all, know-nothing idiot Mike Mellington? Katerina? How about the kids on the bus? There's so many possibilities. So what do you guys think? Was Doug Naylor pulling a bit of a Christopher Nolan with Dreams Within Dreams? Did Back to Earth not go down anywhere near like how we all first thought? And could the boys still be dreaming even years later with the whole of the Dave era possibly all being within a hallucination? Let me know your thoughts down below. Personally, I'm leaning towards the second one where maybe series eight didn't happen. And if you like this somewhat bonkers Red Dwarf theory, then check out this video here where I really let my theory crafting run amok. Seriously, you should watch that, it's pretty good.